right, it's time to uh, get to work on my clay here. I'm going to find the, uh, oh, there we go. I'm going to raise this up a little bit. I bought this uh, sculpting stand from an artist uh, many years ago, probably back in the 80s. And uh, it's made out of a, a stool, an art stool or something like that. He took the seat off and then put a, a board on the uh, where the seat would be, and so I can adjust the height of the, the sculpting stand. I bought a very expensive uh, sculpting stand years ago, but uh, I never use it because it's too big and too bulky. Let's see. I know I got a screw holding this. I guess I don't. What I do is I made this sculpture so I could uh, access different parts of it without having to... Uh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. I forgot how I had this. There we go. I can take this part and uh, work on this uh, warrior uh, by himself, which I'm going to do. I'm going to set this aside. I just made it uh, so I can take the horses apart, I can take uh, the figure apart. Uh, it just makes it easier to work on. It's been several years since I worked on this, um, so it's going to take some cleaning up to do. Well, I got a couple of mannequins that I bought online. I got this from anatomytools.com. Uh, they've got uh, larger figures and these small ones, which uh, if you're doing anatomy, uh, you really have to have them. Um, I mean, you you got all kinds of books and, and stuff like that you can go by, but until you have a, uh, a really good mannequin to go by, you really can't get the feel for the muscles. This is another one of those uh, figures, and as you can see, it's quite a bit bigger than the little one. This one, I can't detach anything. Everything is uh, solid. This one, I can take uh, the arm off and I can look at the uh, muscles uh, underneath the arm, uh, on the inside of the arm that normally is right next to the body and you can't see. And uh, it's just very handy. It's got all the veins if you want to put veins into your sculpture. This is quite a bit more expensive. This is probably in the four or five hundred dollar range, but I, I bought it when I could afford it. You know, I've never regretted it. This is the uh, the head of the uh, figure, and it's detachable. And uh, like I said, you get all the veins uh, that you can look at, and uh, on one side, and then skull on the other side. But these are all magnetically held in place. You, you know, if you tip it over, it's not going to fall out. It had uh, the uh, anatomy of the uh, groin area, but I've lost that. <laughs> but like I said, being able to see it in the round is extremely helpful. And here they've got the uh, outer muscles cut away and the deep muscles uh, showing 
in the leg and in the buttocks. All that is extremely helpful. Alright, let's get started on cleaning my figure up. Like I said, it's been sitting for several years and so it's uh, got a few dings and a few scrapes. And, uh, cutting board down. What you hear in the background are my fans going. It is kind of warm here today. Probably in the 80s, which is warmer than it normally is here. Anyway. Just want to put a little more muscle definition into the figure. It's really handy to have these little wire tools by Glip. You know, it's a Glyptic wire tool and it's, it was designed by a lady that owns uh, Sculpture Depot in Loveland, Colorado and uh, they've got a website that you can buy these at. They're probably the best wire tools you can get because they, they're indestructible. Uh, wire tools like uh, this one over time the wire will break loose and it's really hard to recover from that. Uh, this wire tool breaks loose and you just tighten up the uh, Allen wrench screws uh, in the thing and it tightens up the, the wire again. But I've never had to tighten them up yet. Since his back is so prominent in the uh, sculpture, I have to make this uh, a little more detailed than I normally would do, especially if I had clothing on it. not making heavy cuts into the muscle, I'm just putting a light cut so that uh, I'm not overemphasizing the, uh, the muscle. And since he's straining to hold his horse, uh, those muscles uh, would be strained as well.
I'm going to take this opportunity to uh, remind you all that I have uh, instructional DVDs on how to sculpt. I'm working on uh, my tenth one now. I'm just taking a break from uh, doing the video to uh, work on this uh, sculpture here to get it ready for the foundry. But uh, I put a link in the in the uh, description of this video that takes you to a review of all nine of my current DVDs and uh, if you uh, have any interest in sculpting you might check that out because uh, I give you over 50 years of my experience in sculpting little secrets, little shortcuts little uh, things that can make your sculpture look like you spent hours when actually you spent minutes and uh, I think it's extremely helpful Selling those uh, DVDs help keep me sculpting on YouTube. So, if you like watching my videos, I'll leave that up to you. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this to a point. I'm using a very fine serrated edge so the, the uh, little scribed lines barely show up and when I hit this with uh, some lighter fluid and a brush it will uh, make those lines disappear and smooth out the skin. Now this brush is a little stiff from uh, doing clay in the past, smoothing it out. It just takes a little bit of uh, lighter fluid to soften up the brushes again. Now this part of the sculpture would be up against the horse, but it doesn't mean I can't add detail to it. I 
I gotta work on his hand. I'm probably gonna do that in wax uh, because I need it to hold its shape and it's too small to get a good detail to it and have it hold its shape. I've already done the feathers in wax um, only because they hold their shape better than clay would. This hand will be holding the reins of the horse and so I like the way the hand is and I'm just gonna do a little work on it. It's in clay but see I'm gonna have the fingers spread out on this hand so I need to do those in wax. This is where this uh, being able to take the arm off comes in handy. The camera cuts off after 20 minutes of recording and I don't know where it cut off but uh, I've got to call it quits. It's getting late in the evening. I've got to uh, cut my lawn while, when it gets cool and uh, I'll pick this up tomorrow. <laughs> I know, yeah, it's, it's terrible. You have uh, your regular life mixed in with your sculpting you just sort of uh, have to take it a little bit at a time I think his face his head's back just a little bit like the wind is a gust of wind is hitting his face and uh, he's showing some determination I've tried to show that in the uh, tightness of his upper lip and pushing out the bottom lip a little bit of a strain in the muscles of the face 
His eyes are looking towards the uh, tornado that's coming his way. And uh, he's girding up his uh, courage and uh, trying to get back on his horse so they can get the heck out of there. I'll get him done and then set him aside. I won't put him back on the base until I'm ready to take it to the foundry and photograph it for that matter. Um, I'll do whatever I need to do on the bottom part of his legs here. Uh, they wouldn't have always worn beadwork on their clothing. On everyday use, they would have worn everyday clothes, clothes that they were comfortable wearing at the time of year. All right, everybody, I'm going to say good night, and I'll see you tomorrow. Give me a thumbs up and share my video. And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right, see you next time.